Hello and welcome to the Rhythm of Life. I'm Barbara. I bring you two readings. Firstly from 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and secondly from Hebrews chapter 12. Firstly the Corinthians. The need for self-discipline. Do you not know that in a race all runners run but only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will, be, will not be disqualified for the prize. And from Hebrews chapter 12, run with perseverance the race marked out for you. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy Set before him, he endured the cross, scorning it, its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Thanks be to God for those readings from his holy word. The theme for this morning's Rhythm of Life is running the race, even in the face of obstacles. Have you ever run a race? Have you ever won a medal or a trophy for running a race? I believe it's a thrill. A thrill to run a race and hear the voices of people who are watching as they shout words of encouragement it's an even greater thrill when you finish the race and win the medal or trophy. Several years ago, when the Olympics were held in Barcelona in Spain, the world saw one of the greatest moments in Olympic history. And I was there. Derek Redmond, a young man from Britain, had dreamed all his life of winning a gold medal for running. He'd worked hard to get to the Olympics and his dream was within reach. He was in the semi-finals and was running the race of his life. He could see the finish line ahead as he rounded the final turn. Suddenly he felt a sharp pain in the back of his leg and he fell to the track with a torn Achilles tendon. As the medical attendants ran towards him, Derek struggled to his feet. He started to hop toward the finish line in an attempt to finish the race. Suddenly a man, a few rows in front of me, came out from the stands, pushed aside the security guard and ran to Derek's side. It was Jim Redmond, Derek's father. You don't have to do this, he said to his son. Yes, I do, said Derek. Well then, said his father, we're going to finish this together. And they did. They stayed in Derek's lane all the way to the end. 
At first the crowd watched in silence, and gradually they rose to their feet and cheered and wept. Derek Redmond didn't win a gold medal that day, but he walked away with the incredible memory of a loving father who, when he saw his son in pain, left his seat in the stands to help him finish the race. And I was there. Yes, I really was there, a chance in a million. Sat a few rows behind the soon to be famous Dad. Our Bible readings today teach us that life is like a race, a race that's been set before us. We may struggle and face many obstacles, but we have a great crowd of witnesses who are cheering us on. We, we have a Heavenly Father who loves us and will help us when the pain is too great. We have a Saviour who left his place in heaven and came to earth to show us how to run the race. If we will keep our eyes on him, how can we but help finish the race? 2020 was to have been another Olympic, another Olympic year, with many poised to collect long cherished medals and trophies or maybe even to meet with disaster like poor Derek. I was certainly one of those poised ready to be an armchair critic when things don't go to plan. I've always enjoyed the Olympic Games and particularly athletics. So it was th a thrill in 1992 when I managed to combine a holiday in Spain with four sessions of athletics at the Barcelona Games. This included Colin Jackson, on that occasion a cert to win the gold medal in the 110 meters, meters hurdles, but he didn't. And as I said earlier, Derek Redmond's disaster, a memorable race, yes, but for him a disaster. How the years have flown by. It won't have escaped your notice that today I'm focused on what could be considered to be an Olympic theme. The Isthmian Games and the Olympic Games were originally religious festivals as well as athletics events. One held in honour of Poseidon and the other in honour of Zeus. In AD 393 they were suppressed by the emperor, whose attack on the traditional pagan rituals was part of his project to establish Christianity as one of the official state religion. We can assume from today's epistle that Paul enjoyed the games too, admiring the competitors and their self-discipline and determination. He also used the easily recognised metaphors in today's reading to speak to his audi audiences. Just like local preacher training today, Paul was relating his preaching to everyday events. Today we consider whether Paul's message is still as relevant to us today as it was all those years ago. These are his words. Do, not, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown which will last forever. I want to think about three aspects of these readings today. Firstly, Entering the race is not quite the same as winning it. Paul uses the metaphor of an athletic contest to illuminate the Christian life. The image of an athlete would be well known to all Corinthians. 
the Isthmian Games took place in Corinth and were second only to the Olympic Games. They would know that an athlete must train with intensity and must undergo self-discipline in order to win the crown of laurel leaves. Paul reminds his audience that competitors in the Games were known for their commitment to their rig rigorous training. Those who succeeded at sports were famous, as famous as our sporting legends are today. I'm sure you can picture some well-known examples from our sport. Heroes like athletes, swimmers, gymnasts, cyclists, oarsmen, and so many others. Just as in Paul's day, nothing is achieved without effort. But perhaps Paul's point here is more about perseverance than about competition. He asks the question, do you know, not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? The Corinthians wanted to take it the easy, easy way of faith, but Paul tells them that this won't work. No person will ever get anywhere within the faith if they lack the strictest of self-discipline. Without an ongoing commitment to preaching the gospel, particularly in concern for the weak with whom Christ identified, even an apostle can be disqualified from the race he has entered, but not yet won. The second point I wanted to make is about the race itself. The race is about discipline and discipleship. Paul is recommending that all Christians undergo training and exercise self-discipline. This is not just to win a crown of laurels, which perishes, but so they can win the crown of life, everlasting life, the ultimate prize. They are, in Paul's words, to run in such a way as to get the prize. This self-discipline involves disciplining the mind, just as Paul encourage the Corinthians, he encourages us. We are encouraged to pray regularly, to study the scriptures, to worship as a community. This is not an aimless activity. There must be a purpose to our self-discipline. The runner does not run aimless, aimlessly without an end in view. The runner is heading for the finishing line. The boxer has his eyes on his opponent. The archer is aiming for the bull's eye. Each has an objective and each is orientated towards their particular goal. The prize for us is, of course, eternal life through Jesus Christ. And my third point this morning is that being a Christian does not allow us to rest on our laurels. Paul reminds his audience that those sporting heroes have a goal. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But then he goes on to remind them and us that we do it to get a crown that will last forever. It's all too easy to worship on a Sunday and then forget about it all through the coming week and put the church back in its box until next Sunday. Active Christians are active every day, keeping in touch with each other during the week, sharing the everyday challenges that have to be faced and praying for each other. But more importantly, active Christians go out into the community and share the faith with those beyond our doors. We are sent out, commissioned,
to do as Jesus did, to be his hands, his feet, and to speak his word. So is Paul's message still as relevant today as it was all those years ago? In a different letter, Paul encouraged the Philippians to press towards the goal. This inspired phrase is used to motivate us and press towards our Christian goal, our heavenly reward. Certainly, this is part of what Paul intended to convey with his, his statement. However, Paul is also encouraging us to reach spiritual perfection. Inevitably, when we are striving for spiritual perfection, then we are also striving for that heavenly reward. When we think of the perfect man, we think of Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus encourages us to be perfect, just as our Father in heaven is perfect. Jesus is not saying that we will be able to obtain the kind of perfection that he held. He's referring to a perfection which demands complete spiritual maturity. We can reach the level of spiritual completeness that God demands by continuing to strive to obtain the perfection of Jesus. Of course, we will never reach that perfection but it should be what we're striving for and aiming for. If we are striving towards the goal, then we will reach the level of perfection that God expects from us. Using our Olympic theme as an example, we see the athlete may strive to run 100 metres in five seconds. Impossible. And though he will never obtain his goal, he can become a champion by breaking the world record in his personal struggle to reach perfection. Some Christians will never reach the spiritual maturity God requires because they view their Christianity as a hobby, not a profession. Paul describes lazy, ignorant Christians who are causing strife and grief because they're not willing to strive towards the goal of spiritual completeness. The Christian who wants to be spiritually complete must be willing to put his past behind him. Strive to be blameless. Seek after wisdom. Acquire patience. Control the tongue and work towards complete obedience. So how do you measure up? Well, we're all called to ministry, to a race where all the runners run. We're all called to self-discipline, prayer and study, to run in such a way as to get the prize. We're all called to mission, to get a crown that will last forever. We're all called to support each other, to help us live up to our calling so that we can press towards the goal. I wonder, what is the goal in your life? Jesus tells us it should be this way. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Paul suggests that we apply ourselves with self-discipline with which an athlete prepares to win a contest. We should not be tempted to rest on our laurels, but we must remember that living the Christian life is the beginning of a contest that must continue until it's won. He is telling us to train, to compete as athletes who really want to win. Without effort, Nothing can be won in a sporting event. In the Christian race, 
everybody can run to win the prize. This gives us the greatest encouragement to persevere with all our strength. The hymn writer put it succinctly, May I run the race before me, strong and brave to face the foe, looking only unto Jesus as I onward go. So for the final question to finish on today, have you prepared yourself to attain the prize? Have you done the training? I hope that we are all heading towards or aiming for the ultimate life that God offers through Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour, offering us eternal life. Amen. <laughs>